this is David. Today we're going to talk about live streaming with Azure Media Services. In the last video I showed you how to create a Azure Media Service and upload a video and code that video and share that with others. Uh, before you miss one, you may want to take a look at that one. But I'll repeat the relevant parts here. In order to do live streaming with Azure Media Service, you of course first need to create an Azure Media Service. So I'll do that here. I click the big green plus button at the top and underneath mobile is where I'll find Azure Media Services. I could of course search for it here, but I know that it's right there. Click on that. I just have a few questions to answer. I'll call uh, my service DG Test. Um, I'll create a new resource group, call it DG Test AMSRG for Azure Media Services Resource Group. East US is fine. I will need a storage account, and for this I will create a brand new one here. I'll call it DG test AMS storage and all the defaults are fine here okay and then create this will take a few minutes so I'm going to pause the video right here and come back when my Azure Media Service is created we're back it only took about one minute and our Azure Media Service is now created and I can go to that resource right here and open it up and we can see that it has uh, an endpoint. And if we go down to our live streaming blade right here, we'll notice that there are currently no channels listed at all for live streaming. I can create one in two ways. I can either go to Custom Create, which allows me to select things like the encoding type, uh, the name, a description, automatically start. and streaming protocol, IP restrictions, all that stuff is available for this custom creation. But usually, if I want to just take the defaults, then I can go into Quick Create and it'll just set some things for me. So I'll do that. I'll call this my, uh, how about my channel right here. I don't need a description, but I could add one if I want to. And I want to automatically start the channel after it's created. If not, if I, if I clear that, then I can start it later on if it's one that I don't want to use right away. Uh, remember, you do get charged while the channel is running, so you want to be diligent about when it's running and when it's not running. So while that's creating, I'm, again, I'm going to pause the video so you don't have to sit and wait with me, and I'll come back when it's done. We're back, and our channel has been created. Here's my Azure Media Service. If I go back down to the live streaming blade right here, I see my channel is listed right here. It has an encoding type of pass-through and an ingest protocol of RTMP. Those were just defaults that I selected when I, or that were selected for me when I did the, the, the quick create. I will open up this and I'll show a blade that's specific to this channel. There's a couple things that are important here. One is you'll notice that it's already running. I could stop it here and restart it if I want to. It can go off air. Uh, we will get charged while it's running. Uh, this right here, this is important, ingest URL primary. Either one of these will work. But that's how, when I run my streaming software, that's how I point it to this Azure Media Service. If I want to run a live event, it's already created one live event for me. I can go up here and create a second one if I want to, but one is here, it's called default, and it's already started for me, and it's been published, but it isn't currently streaming. I haven't pointed anything to do to it. Now, to stream, I will need some kind of streaming software. And you can use whatever one you want, but I'm going to use something called Wirecast. which is from Telestream. And if I go to telestream.net and click on Streaming Solutions here, then you'll see this is Wirecast. And if I open that up, there I can get a free trial right here. You can also buy it. I'll click on that just to give you an idea. The cost. It's uh, The cheapest one is $449. It goes up to $949. Take a look at those and decide whether or not you want it. I'm For me, I'm just, this is a demo. I'm going to use the free trial. It works pretty well. Uh, the big disadvantage of it is it puts a watermark on it, like about every 60 seconds or so, a watermark, and it'll say something. So it's good for testing, but it's probably not good for production. I fill this form and download it and install it. I will warn you that it does it did require one restart for me when I installed it. So I've got that, and I, as I said, I'm going to need this URL. So I'm just going to copy that to my clipboard. Hopefully it'll still be there when I get around to it. And I've launched, I've installed and I've launched Wirecast here. And the very first thing that I want to do 
is I want to tell it where I'm going to stream to. So the way I do that is up here on Output, under Output Settings, it asks me, first of all, what's my destination? This will be an RTMP server. There's all the options there. I'll click OK here. And then this address right here, which has a local host on there, I'm going to paste in the address of my channel. I click on OK, and now it's ready to broadcast live to that channel. There's nothing here broadcasting. I need to add that. And so the way I do that is I have to add something like right here. If I have a front-facing camera or an attached video camera, I'd probably want to select it here. This computer doesn't have anything, but I could do screen capture and just do that. That's probably the simplest thing I could do right here. And when I capture my screen right here, it's it'll show something like this. It's actually showing kind of Russian dolls, the entire screen that I have here. You can see my mouse moving around, but if I move it off to the side, you'll see that there's other stuff going on here as well. Now, um, Let's, uh, now here's, uh, it's not live. This is the live over here. In order, this is my preview. This is what I would see if I were live. If I want to go live right here, then I want to click on that. And now this would actually will be live when I go live here. And I can have different layers here if I want to have like a this camera. With, if I want to have a my camera with my face on it, then, uh, and this, this thing overlaid with this thing here, I can have multiple layers on top of this. So maybe some branding I want here. Maybe I'll have uh, me speaking, like a little talking head in the corner, and the screencast below it, or something like that. It's all possible here with these layers. Uh, for now, I'll just do the screencast. And it's uh, this will be like what I see. The, the advantage of the preview is that I could change this. Let's see what it looks like, and then go live with it. All right, now that I've got something to, to broadcast, I want to actually broadcast it. So the way that I do that is under the output. I select start, stop recording, and then there's only one thing here, start RTMP server, and click on that. I wait for it to start up. And it looks like it's going now. Now I'm live streaming, but actually to see it, I need to go back to the Azure portal. And from here, you notice this isn't streaming here, so I need to click on this. And to begin streaming, the streaming endpoint must be running. Click here to update the streaming endpoint. I'll click on that, and then I will start that streaming endpoint. But it'll take a minute, so I'm going to pause the recording now. Now we've started streaming. We should be able to watch this. And if I click on watch right here, then a viewer pops up right here, and I should see a preview, and you can see my mouse moving around, and there's the screen capture that I was doing before. It's a little behind because this is showing it from the beginning. So the idea of a, a, a live broadcast, it's not real time. There's always some latency. It's going out to the web. It's coming back and things like that. Um, this, now this is a demonstration of Wirecast. Uh, there's the preview version showing a little, pre every once in a while showing a, a watermark and saying something. Now, if I, um, uh, if th this is great for me. I can see it here, but I can't share that. If I want to share it, then I need to use some sort of this a is a uh, demonstration of Wirecast. Some sort of a player to share it with. And you can just choose whatever player you want. Um, there happens to be one that's available at uh, called the Azure Media Player, and I can find that. I'll just search this for it. This is a demonstration let's, of Wirecast. Let's close the preview here, and I'll search for Azure Media Player right here, and. There it is, ampdemo.azureedge.net. You have video. There's the sample video that's just with it. You can show all these sample videos, but what I really want to do is I want to paste something in here in the URL, and that will be a something.ism slash manifest. You see that right here? Or MP4, one of those two. So if I go back here, I can find that dot manifest right there. This is what I want to share. Let me copy that and then I'll paste it into there and update the player and now I actually I want to get rid of HTTP right there and do it and now there it is there's my live streaming copying that you see that it's a few seconds behind but it is I'll put finger this quotes around the word live of Wirecast. and it's showing what I'm doing right here so that in a nutshell is how you can implement live streaming 
using a, a streaming software such as Wirecast and using Azure Media Services and some sort of player like the Azure Media Player. You can find these instructions at my blog. I've written a, a blog post about that. It's available right here at davidgr.com. If you look at the August 25th edition, you can find using Azure Media Services to live stream video. This is David. Thank you for watching.